Matt Davio back again with the Bitcoin and blockchain evolution called Babe. And we're, Sarah's not joining us today, unfortunately, Matt. Uh, we got going a little late here since so she had to run out. But I appreciate you coming on today. I've got Matt Peterman. Matt is the founder and CEO of InsurePal. And if you haven't heard of InsurePal, I think what really uh, attracted me to it is we're talking about another business uh, that everybody uses. Uh, well, not everybody, but insurance. Uh, and particularly uh, what is intriguing about it is this is really the, the next generation of peer-to-peer -peer insurance based on social proofing endorsements, which uh, really enables to harness the power of the blockchain. So thanks for coming on today, Matt, and I can't wait to hear about this. And by the way, astounding that your your initial coin offering filled up, and we're not talking about a small amount of money, but $18 million in 80 seconds. Uh, thank you again for, for, for inviting us. Uh, I will just uh, maybe tell you a few things also about the ICO. Basically, four blocks we needed to fill the, 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 the ICO part. And we had to re return around $120 million, uh, which landed on our smart contract in the first 10 minutes. So not only did you get your $18 million, but you got another $120 million. Yep. Well, basically, basically, we had in pre-sale $12 million, and we had a space of $6 million in a so-called in the ICO phase. So um, uh, basically, we, I mean, by our estimation, we had to return, I mean, because at the end of the moment, a lot of people came in, so we had to return on smart contract 120 and uh, orally another 15 million, uh, which we said, you know, guys, you're too late, no way to, to get in. So right. uh, it, it's, it's also good for us because we are happy because it means that social proof on a blockchain uh, has also, let's say, potential for a product because there was so much of interest, not just for money, because of the, not just because of the money, but also because of the, uh, let's say, of the need to have something like this to change the, the uh, let's say, the insurance business. Now, the insurance business, uh, on my research, looks like uh, on the auto side alone is somewhere around what? Uh, how many? How many? I know the business itself is about seven trillion, but what is the auto business? Uh, what's their piece of that seven trillion? Well, basically. Basically, we are not just aiming for uh, motor. Uh, we are aiming also for other lines of business, including health, property. Okay. Uh, I'll maybe start from 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 beginning. I mean, I've been doing fraud detection and underwriting uh, for large insurers, including Allianz, uh, Fosun, uh, Groupama, etc. Okay. So basically, what we saw, uh, we were basically we had our own software for fraud detection in claims and underwriting. And we saw that today, approximately, if you take a regular, let's say, premium of a car, uh, if you pay 100 bucks, out of that is approximately 60 bucks for claims, so for basically for damages. Out of that, 10% is fraudulent. So basically, um, you lose 10% immediately. And secondly, there's a 15% of so-called premium leakage. What's premium leakage? Premium leakage is basically uh, you go to your agent, he asks you how many miles do you do, and you say, well, I do 17,000. And he says, well, let's put 12,000 because you get a better premium, right. which is fine. But on the other hand, that if everybody does that, you know, somebody loses. So we're all paying for uh, gaming the system a little bit right now is what you're saying. Yeah. And if you see in states, you have a lot of mutual insurances and at the beginning, the mutual insurances where there were five guys saying, I want to insure my, my cargo, which is going from London to, uh, to, to, let's say to states and not to have a problem if my, my cargo sinks, 
everybody put a part of the money and said, okay, if your cargo sinks, we will cover it. That was the beginning of mutual insurance. But today we think that, you know, we are not uh, a group, but that there's a large corporation, which is called insurance, which simply uh, gives the money and gives the money back, you know. We don't see each other among, anymore connecting among ourselves. But blockchain can enable to bring some part of that, you know, let's say initial root of the mutual insurance back. Yeah, so in the, in the old days, if I can be, uh, if I can kind of recap this, uh, insurance companies were, as you said, they were mutually founded by a group of people probably that understood the pool that they were willing to insure, whether it was health or, uh, or uh, cars, autos, or, or uh, you know, like you said, protecting your, your goods that you're shipping on the ocean. And then it kind of spread into, uh, we don't really understand your business, but we understand actuary tables. So we're going we're gonna to insure anything just based on the math. And we have this money to put to work. And we really don't understand the risk. And, and, and therefore, you get into situations uh, probably also on the business to business and B to C side where risk is greater for the insurer, uh, just as it is for the actual person being insured, right? From the, from the retail all the way up to the corporate level, everybody's carrying way more risk than they should, in essence, is what I'm hearing. Yeah, and also you have to understand that there's a large amount of people that, let's say, in, in motor, which do not have any claims for more than five, six years. And then you have a small amount. I mean, when you're doing, uh, let's say, a project in a large uh, insurer uh, for fraud, we saw that 1% of the premiums, also 1% of the clients, are bringing 10% of the costs. So basically, what the, the, the issue is that good drivers or good in, insured persons are paying for the rest. Right. So we are trying to solve part of that. That's one kind of the, 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 the uh, insurance part, uh, which I think it's unfair and premiums are going up each year. Right. And you see this also, by the way, especially in the United States, where we don't have universal health care, yet we're trying to solve a problem. We've had out of control premiums because of the same issue that you brought up, Matt, which is few of us are now spreading the risk out for those that don't pay. And our premiums keep going up and up, even though I, you know, I don't get the benefits that I used to get from cheaper insurance because there's so many people that aren't paying. So I'm, I'm covering them even though, you know, it, so it's a very disparate system. It's very broken is really where we are. Well, for health, a typical example is you go, go to insurance that ask, do you smoke? Well, you say, well, I don't smoke. But if your colleague would be vouching for you, he would say, yes, but on Friday, he's a social smoker. <laughs> he smokes a pack of cigarettes. Mm -hmm. I know he's doing that. Uh, oh, are you going to a fitness club? Yes, I'm going. And your colleagues, no, I, yes, you have a card for fitness, but you haven't been never there. Right. Because I know you. So talk yeah. about, let's talk about the social proofing side of it and why, why it works. And I think your ICO is a great example of it, right? People got behind it. They saw the worth of this right away because they're, they know that uh, the power of uh, the group think is super, super powerful when used properly. Well, if I see the, let's say on one side, the, 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 if we see similar models, we see that they reduce the claims for 20 to 30%. So basically, if let's say a group of, I don't know, um, a friends uh, insure, themselves among each other, uh, or if a parent endorses a child, that child will be much more careful. Or if I endorse somebody who's uh, with me on, uh, on uh, working, and I see that he just recently, uh, he was drinking, and he's trying to 
to bring me home with his car. I say, yes, you know, but still I'm watching for you. Can we maybe take a taxi? So it's a, it's a quite simple uh, peer pressure. And I think that um, it shows that it can really improve the results. So let's talk about this a little bit, because in theory, again, the idea is I know that you're a really safe driver, Matt, and I'm willing to put up uh, some risk dollars to allow you cheaper insurance rates because I know I've driven with you and you're very safe. So I go up and I, I, I back that in theory with my credit card. Now, how do the, then how, I know there's a piece in here that I'm missing. How do the insurance companies, you're meeting with these insurance, insurance companies as we speak. They're very, very interested in how to use blockchain technology. So take me from kind of that infancy to how do, how do the insurance companies get behind this and then roll it out to the customers and reduce their overall both risk and the, the cost to the, the actual person that's being insured. Well, there are two parts which, which, which we're trying to do with the blockchain. One is the smart contracts behind the, behind the contracts. So uh, we saw in UK that uh, the first smart contracts have been also uh, resolved on courts. So it's possible to do it uh, in a smart contract, which is, which is let's say, uh, at the end sealed. What we're also trying to push a little, and that's especially uh, more, more interesting in Europe, is that you put your personal data on the blockchain instead of having it in centralized institution. Your current data are in centralized institution, like Equifax, like whoever. Yeah. We see that some part of those data could be stored at your wallet, or at your private, uh, uh, on a blockchain stored with private key. And you are the guy who's then deciding whom to go give this data. And this data is always in your ownership. Right. So that's the advantage of blockchain because then you can really say, okay, these are my data. I'm going to ship them to this insurance or I will give them the, uh, let's say a limited amount of time when they can access my data. So those are the two parts. I mean, looking forward, of course, you do, can do a, a really good peer-to-peer -peer -peer insurance, but this is still a far away because currently you need a license and you need an insurance behind it in order to run a pure peer-to-peer -peer distributed uh, you can do it for some of the things, but not for the, let's say, completely regulated insurance lines. Right. So that's where the partnerships obviously are going to come in for you and InsurePal because you're going to need that distribution arm to access uh, that secure data and then have that distribution arm be able to market and sell uh, a better product to the consumer ultimately, correct? Yeah, there are two parts. One is uh, one is we are in discussion with several, let's say, um, clubs or charities or membership organizations where we can offer them social proof in order to reduce not just the insurance, but also other parts where you need insurance, uh, where you need social proof as, a, as, a, as an example of, let's say, uh, of, of, of usage. A typical example is, okay, you wanna buy, you wanna buy a new car, okay, fine. Uh, you wanna do it through leasing, so they say, okay, can you put me 10% of the value uh, as a deposit? The other option is, to say, okay, can you bring somebody that will put that deposit in the amount of 10% in a form of guarantee, in a form of credit card? So you can use this social proof, not just for the insurance, but also for other industries, because you reduce the, 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 the you increase the trust among the parties. 
Because if you have five guys that are vouching for you, it's, it's not so easy to get five guys to say, I'll, I'll put uh, $200 uh, to vouch. So it's giving a kind of a bar higher. And you guys have filed for a patent on this social proof concept also. Can you give me a little flavor of what that would look like if it were issued? Well, it, it would basically means, mean that uh, all, the, all the, let's say, um, all the insurances were also uh, a kind of a uh, betting is involved, vouching for the others would have to pay a certain license fee. In a, in okay. a, in a, in a, I mean, in states, you have issued around 200 insurance, insurance uh, patents. We saw that uh, we filed it with a, with a really good law firm, which, which is quite sure that this patent is going to be uh, granted. So, um, but as I said, it's, it's just one part of the whole story. It's not, we, we don't, uh, I mean, it's not the only part where we, where we have some advantage. We have also some advantage in, in some of the blockchain technologies. We have some advantages also in, in, in social proof processes. So, so there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, I would say there's a lot of neuroscience and behavioral science going on into what you're building here. Uh, the scalability obviously is huge. That's why people are so excited about it from both the business and the consumer perspective. The industry know-how, you've been working on the fraud side, as you said, so you're bringing the best of both worlds into play in that you have worked in the traditional, you know, this is always where the problem is. We have the, we have the world of insurance today and we have the world of insurance tomorrow and kind of getting those two in sync is always difficult. So your knowledge there and, and the, the, the people on your team are real key. Can you talk a little bit also about the token that, that, again, the money that was just raised, what will that money be used uh, initially and how are you gonna be rolling out uh, from white paper to design and, and to actual uh, you know, reality uh, making that leap? Uh, good question. As I said, as, you, as I explained you already now, we see that uh, not just one product, but several products uh, rolling out and currently we are, we are, we are, let's say, uh, designing different products, not just the insurance, but also insurance on the blockchain. Uh, tomorrow I'm, uh, at the conference in Amsterdam, uh, which has to do the, with digital identity. We think that we can put on digital identity, also social proof in order to increase the, 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 uh, let's say the, uh, trust among the parties. Uh, and we think that the tokens which we issued can be used to put your social proof on a blockchain, can be used also for, uh, let's say, for vouching, can be used also for, let's say, claims adjusting, can be used also for, uh, for uh, transactions within, within the ecosystem. We think that the token enables you to build the ecosystem around it in order to have participants, uh, let's say, bind it together. Uh, so that's why the token part is for us uh, really important that each one in the system gets a token and that token is, is, is used for different, let's say, uh, one side insurance type of operations and secondly also in bonding people in, in common, common goal. So uh, do, you, do you see uh, kind of a move back then to the mutual insurance where you and I are actually owners of the insurance company where we are mutually insuring many, many, obviously many products across many countries ac across the world, I would suspect. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, that, that's, the, the, that's the beauty of blockchain because basically it enables to connect different dots on, on the world map. Uh, with uh, with not just with uh, uh, on one side with digital identity and also with uh, with uh, monetary ter terms you know with monetary uh, tokens because you know simply it really enables to touch different points of the um, of the of the universe uh, among each other in in a, in a in a 
let's say, in an efficient way, because at the end of the day, if you want to replicate the, 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 the uh, core systems of the insurance companies and, uh, let's say, the, any of the payment systems, I mean, even today you have to pay for, uh, you know, if, if insurance company wants to do a core insurance system, they have to pay around 2 to 3% of premiums. Right. Per year, right, and blockchain can of course um, offset part of it. We don't believe that it's going to happen tomorrow, but there are good uh, good ways to reduce or to let's say improve the, the the on one side the claims and operational part. Right, and so you guys again, you've been around for about three years. And so some of the projects that you're working on now, kind of from that soft idea, the white papers over to the real, uh, the real juice is, uh, you know, you've got, you're looking at EU passport license agreements. You're looking at uh, some different uh, pilots in the United Kingdom. Is there, are you free to talk about some of those things that you're working on currently? Well, currently we have in pipeline between 15 and 30 insurance companies which uh, where we are in different stages. So I'm saying that, you know, for us, UK pilot is fine, but we don't have a UK, only a UK pilot. We have also interest from, uh, from US, from Canada, from Singapore. Uh, different insurers want to get on our platform and to start to use it because it's not just the uh, advantage of it. And it's, it's also, let's say, uh, it's also a marketing tool on one side. And we hope that with that, we can also bring some of the classical insurance to the blockchain part. Right. So some of the scale that comes with the larger insurance companies then would be brought to, the, to a centralized platform of, of decentralized participants, yeah. which, which then allows them to uh, provide value to both sides of the equation. Very... That's fascinating because I mean, and, and I would totally see why uh, worldwide insurance companies like AIG and uh, you know uh, any of the large companies would want to use this type of platform because you're 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 light years ahead of where they could be with this type of knowledge. I agree, and again, I'm proud that we had uh, in the last months 1.8 billion media reach which means that, you know, regardless if, I mean, even if you're not the only company which does it, we think that we, we've, we've started a, a kind of a wave of, of, of people understanding why social proof should be maybe used more often. Um, and in states, for example, 1.2 million Americans are vouching for their kids, for their student loans. It's not right. something unusual. Right. And the total amount exposure is that 165 billion. So, okay, or if on one side you're vouching for, for 10,000 lo student loan, why you shouldn't vouch for, you know, smaller things like insurance, you know? Yep. It's pretty powerful. I'm, I'm super excited about what you guys are building. What, uh, if I had to ask you, you know, what, what, what's keeping you up at night? What things are, are, you know, we're actually talking, it's closer to 11 uh, in Slovenia right now. You're up late. You're burning the fire on both ends. You've got to be in Amsterdam tomorrow morning. What is, uh, what is eating up your time right now? What's, what's really on the front, front burner for you that you're spending so much time on? Well, basically, we, I mean, a set, my and partners, uh, let's say, uh, past history show that there has to be some changes in, 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 in this, this industry because simply uh, it doesn't go anymore in, the, in this direction because the premiums are going up, the, the insurers are unhappy because they have poor results. And secondly, uh, we see another part, which is blockchain, which really can enable let's say, peer-to-peer -peer transaction together with social proof in a big scale. And, and in a way that makes it easy for me and you to do that also. That's the other thing. It's the ease of use versus 
trying to have to cobble it together, you guys are coming up with, again, a platform that can deliver upon a very simple concept, but difficult to uh, employ, I would imagine. Yeah, but you know, if I want to sell you an iPhone, okay, I can do that. But I don't know whether you're going to pay it. Right. So we don't know each other. So we are on a blockchain, just an ID. I can do that, that I can ask you, please show me your social proof. And it can be also zero proof knowledge. So I get just the score from you. I don't know who are your friends, but I know the score. Right. So that's a part where, where, where we think it's, 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 it's really, it has a chance to, 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 to become a really um, strong, strong flow of, of, of new, new clients and, uh, and let's say, uh, of, of new ways to, to, to do business. Right. Yeah, totally different ways. And probably bring some massive scalable uh, efficiencies to a very inefficient distribution system. Agree, because today, as you know, uh, you pay uh, usual commissions are between 10 and 30%. Right. Um, and he said, you know, I mean, if you, you know, if you think again, if you and your, your, your family would insure among each other on a larger scale, on, let's say on, a, on, a, on, a, on one million, uh, you wouldn't have these issues with, with fraud. You wouldn't have those issues with, I mean, you would of course still have them, you know, but you would have them less. And also um, marketing. Also, you wouldn't spend that much of the money for marketing. Right. Most of that would disappear. You would streamline the costs. Uh, both sides benefit, and you'd have less, uh, as you said, you'd have less fraud. You'd have less abuse on the on the insurance side, and, and that's a problem. Uh, I'm sure that is, uh, since you've worked in that side of things, it's rampant. It's out of you know, it's it's a small percentage, but it's a large number when it when it when you look at the dollars that are fraudulently uh, abused out of the insurance system today. Yeah, and the same is in, we have similar issues in health system, uh, yeah. similar issues in, in, in property, but you know your friends much better and you know, hey, hey guys, you know, you're not going to file something which is going to hurt me. Right. Uh, why you should do that, you know? Why, right, right. Why, 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 why trying to, uh, to, to do it? Well, well, Matt, I know, I know uh, we got started late. I want to thank you for coming on today. I'm super excited. I want to reach out to you as you're ready to roll out some um, products. Uh, now that you've got the money in the house, you've had it for less than a month. So thanks for coming on. I know you're very, very busy. The social proofing of insurance. Uh, people can find uh, the company at insurepal.io. Where else are you guys? You guys are on Twitter. You're on all the typical social channels, yes. I believe. Yes, yep. we are. We are on 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 on, on, uh, on Twitter. We are on uh, uh, Telegram. Uh, we are on Facebook. We have uh, more than two hundred thousand uh, uh, followers on Facebook. So basically, uh, a set again. We do not want that. We are the only guys that are pushing the social proof. We think that that's something which is good for the whole society, not just for us. I would agree with that, and I'm really, I'm really excited about what you guys are doing. And I know uh, this is the thing that I'm, we're really trying to spread: is that we're not just talking about tokens here. We're talking about utilization of the blockchain, blockchain here, to really impact your life every day. And insurance, I can tell you, uh, I've got four teenage drivers. And they're all pretty good drivers, and it kills me, it kills me, it kills me to write that check every month on how much insurance. And fortunately, my kids have avoided all types of uh, accidents in their short driving careers. But I would like to pay less insurance for good drivers. They have good grades. They have good drivers. I want to be able to uh, engage that. Absolutely. I mean, uh, that was a really good example which you showed because, you know, with young drivers, insurance companies do not have the data about their behavior. You as a parent know exactly 
who is, is less likely to have accident and you know that you can vouch for them and you can reduce it. But if yep. I'm an insurer, I don't know how they're gonna behave. So we are solving also an issue for, for the insurers. Yeah, you're solving, you're, you're, you're giving them a way to uh, basically reduce their overall uh, slippage that they have built into the premiums that, that are there today. I totally agree. I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a win for the large uh, businesses that, that really enables them to go back to kind of a mutual insurance model, which reduces costs and, and spreads the risk amongst a, a common group. Yeah. Yep. I mean, um, really glad to, 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 to have discussion with you because I, I see that you understand the, the, the logic behind. Uh, yeah. And I'm glad that you can, we can share the, the social food to other industries, not just, just to insurance. Absolutely. Well, Matt, I'll be in contact with you. I appreciate you coming on today and I want to thank you again. And I know you're real busy. Have a great trip to uh, the Netherlands and uh, we'll talk to you on the other side. Hey, thanks again. All the best. Matt, Pe Matt Peterman with insurepal.io. You can find him on the webs there and all the social networks. Thanks again for coming on.